All right, hello geometry students. This is going to be um, a quick little video. We'll see how quick it is, but a little video to help you out if you are working on the Unit 5 Review Worksheet. I'm going to pick off where we left off in class um, on Friday and um, so that you can use this as a study tool and make sure you're ready for the test on Monday. All right, so where we left off was numbers 24 through 26, and for numbers 24 through 26, it says use the figure to the right to complete the statements with either greater than, less than, or equal to. So we're talking about for number 24. Um, if you look in the picture, we have A, B is congruent to B, C. Um, uh, a, D is 8, and C, D is 10, with B, D being 7. All right, so we're going to first look at angle BAD, angle BAD. So this angle right here, and angle ABD, which would be ABD, this angle right here. So angle BAD would be less than angle ABD because of their opposite sides. You can see the opposite side for angle BAD is smaller then the opposite side for ABD, so that means the angle opposite would be the smaller. The angle opposite, the larger angle would be larger, and the smaller angle would be smaller. So BAD is smaller in that case. We're going to be using that same reasoning for these, these other ones as well. So angle CBD, angle CBD, so this one right here, and angle BCD, angle BCD right here. And you can tell right here that angle CBD is larger, it's greater than, because 10, the opposite side 10 is greater than 7. Okay? And then lastly, lastly, angle ABD, which is just like one of the ones we did for the first one, angle ABD here, is, let's see, we have angle CBD right here. So angle ABD has to be less than because again you can see it's this opposite side is less than this opposite side of 10. Okay. So let's go on to number 25 and 26. Number 25 and 26, it says write the first step of an indirect proof. So this is getting into indirect, indirect proofs. And we know <clears throat> we have the given statement. And we have to find the assumption is what we're looking for. The assumption. So a number G is divisible by um, 2. Proof of the given statement and division is divisible by 2. This is actually what we're trying to prove. We have a number g as our given. We want to know that it's divisible by 2. So let's say, first of all, a number g is not divisible by 2. All right, and then we can do um, some statements based off of that and find look for a contradiction. In this case, angle C is not a right angle. We're going to say that angle C is a right angle. So those are the assumptions. And now getting to that, we're going to actually do a proof here. For number 27, you actually have to do an indirect proof. So we always still start with a given, but then we're going to have to have an assumption that is contrary or contradictory to um, the what you're trying to prove. All right, we're going to try and prove that indirectly, true by proving its opposite to be false. All right, so if you have the given of the measure of angle one not equal to the measure of angle two, that's given again. We're trying to prove that triangle ABC is not an isosceles triangle with vertex B. Okay. Or we could say, or our assumption could be a couple different things depending on how we want to do it. We could say that um, 
our triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle with the vertex B. All right. So we'll say that one. We'll say triangle ABC. Um, actually, that one, or you could say with a different vertices, like uh, having different. Which one would actually be the vertex? We'll just we'll try this one. We'll say triangle ABC. I'm gonna type this one in here. Is an isosceles triangle with angle or with vertex to be. I'll make this a whole lot smaller so it can fit in there. We'll say that it is. We'll just see what happens with that. So that's kind of contradicting the the proven statement, and, and that's the opposite of the proven statement. So let's see if we can find a contradiction here. So the vertex B, um, that would mean from the triangle that side AB, and this is just uh, this would be from the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem that angle one would be congruent to angle two and that's the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem and that would mean that the measure of angle one is congruent or sorry, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. Um, definition of congruence there. And that is a contradiction. So we can use our contradiction symbols here. Find a contradiction to the given. And so that means that triangle ABC. Well, we'll actually go here. Therefore, with, this is a contradiction. Therefore, our assumption must be false, making triangle ABC not isosceles. Okay. Now, there's again, there's different ways that you can do this. Do this. You could say um, triangle ABC is not isosceles triangle. Um, Actually, no, this would be the best way to do it. And you can see there's two steps. There are other ways to do it. This is what I would suggest. When there is a not, then just change it to is for your assumption. And that will help you prove a contradiction. All right, so that's number 27. Uh, let's quickly do number 28 through 31 here. 28 says list the, uh, the angles of each triangle in order from smallest to largest. And this comes um, directly from... I believe it was a theorem, and it 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 talks about the opposite the opposite sides of um, and it's really related to the hinge theorem for number twenty eight. Which triangle is greater? If we know, I guess this one it depends on what y would be, because if y is a negative number, but that that also wouldn't wouldn't really make sense for it to be a negative side length. But so no matter what y is, it has to be a positive number for side length. So that means that this would have to be our largest angle or side, and this would have to be our smallest. So that means that if 3y is the smallest, um, the angle j would be the smallest. Next smallest is 4y, angle L, and then angle k. Now at number 29, you're going to have to figure out um, the distance here. So if you wanted to graph them, you can. Let's just see what AB is. The distance of AB. And the distance is square root of let's do x to 3 minus negative 1 squared plus 
um, the y's, which would be 2 minus 5 squared. And we're going to do the square root of that, which equals, this would be 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3, negative 3 squared, which is 9. So it's going to end up equaling 20, square root of 25, which is equal to 5. So the length of AB is 5, using the distance formula there. And I'm going to lock this so that it can move some things around. Pull this over there. So we know that the length of AB is 5. Let's do the same thing with AC and BC. So AC equals the square root of, let's do 3 minus negative 3 squared plus the square root of or, um, 2 minus negative 7 squared and you'd end up having the square root of 6 squared plus 9 squared, which would be square root of 36 plus 81, which would be square root of 117. This is just going to be a little bit under 11. So we'll say square root of 117 is... Now well, we'll check the calculator. If I did my math correctly, you should have the square root of 117, which is ten, about 10.8. Alright, so I'm going to minimize that so that we can find the last one. And we will do that one in purple. So A or B C equals the square root of negative one minus negative three squared plus five minus negative seven squared. And that's gonna be equal to square root of 2 squared, so negative 1 plus 3 would be 2 squared, which is 4, plus 12 squared, and you're going to have the square root of 4 plus 144, square root of 148, and if we want to check that, 148 squared is about 12.1. And based on what we talked about just before, um, the angle with the larger opposite side is also the larger angle, and the smaller opposite side would be the smallest angle. So our smallest opposite side here is AB, so that means angle C is the smallest. So we go angle C. And the next smallest is 10.8, so the opposite side angle would be angle B, and then angle A. That is smallest to largest. Alright, the numbers 30 and 31 list the side lengths in order from shortest to longest. And now we're given some angle measures. Alright, so we have 61 for number 30, we have 54. 61 plus 54 figure out what the last one is, 51, 15, and that would leave us with um, 65 degrees here. 
So then this is the largest angle. That means the smallest side would be this one. Or sorry, the smallest side would still be the opposite of 54. That's the smallest angle. So we have um, MO. Oh, whoops, not sure how that happened there. We have MO. Then the next smallest angle is 61 degrees. So the opposite one would be NO or ON. And then 65, so MN. All right, now number 31. 31, let's see. We have angle measure of angle A, 3x plus 10. Measure of angle B, 2x minus 5. Measure of angle C, x plus 1. So no matter what, our biggest angle is going to be this one, angle A. So our farthest right is going to be um, the opposite of that, which would be BC. Fill, fill in the first two. Um, let's see, let's plug in something for x. Let's plug in 0. It's always a good one. So 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. This would be negative 5. What, we, what if we plug in 1? So it has to be something bigger than 0. Um, let's plug in 1. This would be, yeah, let's, let's plug in at least 3. So we have 6, that would be 1. And this would be 4. Plug in 4, we'd have 3, we'd have 5. Plug in 5, we'd have 5, and we have 6. Plug in 6, we'd have 7, and we'd have 7. Okay. Plug in 8, we'd have 16, and we'd have, or sorry, 11, we'd have 9. So, so first I thought to myself, why not try this method of guessing and checking? Because, you know, it works, sometimes it can be faster, but then I realized this probably isn't the best way to do it. Alright, so let's just figure out what X is. Now I'm pretty sure... Um, angle A is going to be the largest anyway, but let's just figure out what X is, and then we will have no questions on which um, angle is the biggest, and then which side is the biggest. So I'm going to use green for this. So if we know that the three angles add up to 180, we can add them all together and say 3X plus 10 plus 2X minus 5 plus X plus 1 equals 180, 180 degrees. So the x's we've got, one, we've got six total x's, six x, and for numbers we've got 10 minus 5 plus 1, we got 6 then. 10 minus 5 is 5, plus 1 we have 6, plus 6 equals 180, subtract 6 from both sides, 6 x equals 174, Divide by 6, x equals, that would be, I believe it's 29. We'll check that to make sure. So 174 divided by 6. Alright, it is 129. So if x is 1, er, it is 29, so if x is 29, I'll get rid of all this work that we did so we can make some room to figure out the measures of the angles. So the measure of angle A equals 3 times 29 plus 10, which equals 3 times 29. 3 times 30 is 90, so it would be 87, and that would be 97 degrees. Measure of angle B equals 2 times 29 minus 5. 2 times 29 would be 58. And 58 minus 5 is 53 degrees. And then the measure of angle C equals 29 plus 1, which equals 30 degrees. If you add those up, they should all add. So this would be 150 um, plus 30. That is 180. All right. So we've got 
our oops angle measures. So now measure angle or A is gonna be the largest, and that's gonna be the last one we list. Just like we said before. Measure of angle C is the shortest, so that means that A B will be the shortest side, and that leaves A C to be the middle one. Okay? So that's how you do number 30 and 31. Alright. Can a triangle have two sides with lengths of or have sides with lengths of 7, 13, and 6. Explain. Well, let's check. Um, there, we have a theorem that says that um, if two, two of the sides are not equal to some of those two sides, can it has to be larger than the third side. So let's take 7 and 6. 7 plus 6 is, is equal to 13, so that is not larger than 13. So no, it, it contradicts that theorem. Cannot have that. That would just make one straight line. All right, number 33 says the lengths of two sides of a triangle are 25 and 10. Find the range of possible lengths for the third side. So first of all, the third side we'll say is x. x we know would have to be less than uh, 15. Because if you have the third side of 15, um, or sorry, greater than 15, it has to be greater than 15, because if it's less than 15, anything less than 15 would mean that the two uh, smaller sides would not add up to greater than 25. So then we'll erase that. So x would have to be greater than 15. And less than, let's see. Um, See, it's the third side. So then let's say the third side is the largest side. That means that it would have to be um, 25 and 10 would have to add up to being greater than that side. So 25 and 10 would have to be 25 plus 10 would have to be greater than x. That means that x would have to be less than 35. So it would be between 35 and 15. All right, moving on to number 34 and 35. Write an inequality relating the given side lengths. Which theorem justifies your answer? So what you need is your theorem sheet out. That would help you with this one. And we know from theorems that um, are from recent theorems, and I'm going to pull mine out right here, and I'll find the exact theorem to help me out here. But so theorems five thirteen and five fourteen dealing with the hinge theorem. We want to deal with um, sides BA and BC. So that depends on the two angles that we have. And the hinge theorem says whichever um, uh, triangle, the angle, the given angle opens up larger, that's going to have the larger opposite side. So we have BA and BC, which we're looking at are highlighted in green here. So we have to look at these two angles. This one is 87. This one would be 93 then. And so, because of that, uh, it's a linear pair. So, based on that, we'd have to say that ABA is greater than BC because of theorem 514. Or, I apologize, 513, which would be the hinge theorem. That's if you're given the angle measurements, you can figure out which side lengths would be larger. Not the specific side length, but we can figure out which ones would be larger or smaller. Now for 35, we're looking at sides BC and AD. And so we have to look at their opposite angles. And in this case, we have the angle, the opposite angle here. And I believe this is going with this, is 45 degrees. 
and this one is 60 degrees. So that means that side BC is greater than side AB. Because the opposite angle for BC is greater than the opposite angle for AD. And that, again, that comes straight from the hinge theorem. All right, moving on to 36. Right, inequality relating to given measures. And this is going to come from the converse of the hinge theorem. If we know the side lengths, we can figure out which is this larger angle again. So we're going to look at measure of angle L and the measure of angle R. So this one and this one. So let's look at their opposite sides, 14 and 16, or 15. So that means that 15 is larger, so measure of angle R is greater than the measure of angle L. And that, again, is the converse of the hinge theorem. If we know the side lengths, we can figure out which ones have, which angles are larger. Now number 37, 37, right, and solve an inequality for X. All right, so this one's going to be a multi-stepped one. We're going to find out what X is um, by saying that, well, we're going to figure out what Y is first. So you're going to have to figure out what Y is first. And we can say that 2y, add them, add them off, 2y plus 12 plus 4y plus 12, whoops, plus y minus 18 equals 180. So we have 2y, 4y, 1y, we have a total of... 7y, and we have plus 12, plus 12, minus 18, so it's going to be 24 minus 18, so that's plus 4. I'm ah, sorry, 24 minus 18 is 6, so we have plus 6 equals 180. Subtract 6 from both sides, 7y equals 170, 174. And we divide both sides by 7. Y then equals, we'll check that out, 174 divided by 7. Something doesn't look right there. All right, do we do this right? So we have 7Y total. And we have 24 minus 18 would be 6. And that all adds up to, um, all right, to 24 minus 18 would be 6. And that all adds up to 80, 180. And 174 divided by the size by 7. So it looks like that would be right. It's about 24 point something. Oh, wrong one. 24.85. And that just means that we, that tells us that y is going to be positive no matter what. So why don't we just take a look at, if it's a positive number, we're plugging in for the opposite angles. So this angle and this angle, because we have the two side lengths that we're looking for. The opposite angles, we know that it's going to, no matter what, this is going to be the larger angle. 4y plus 12. So that means that over in red here, we'll say that 3, the opposite side, 3x plus 15, is going to be greater than 4x plus 7. And then we can solve for x. So I'll subtract, let's see, I'll subtract 3x from both sides, and then subtract 7 from both sides. You'll end up with 8 is greater than x, or x is less than 8. All right, so that is our inequality for x in this case. All right, last page is a couple things here. Given a triangle with its vertices um, of a, b, and c, find the coordinates of each point of concurrency. So centroid and orthocenter. I would suggest graphing it. I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to I'm going to suggest one would graph it. Um, you'll find that I believe it's going to be a right triangle. 
or at least it'll be um, it'll it'll work out nicely. So the centroid is the um, where the medians intersect. And the ortho center then, that is where the altitudes intersect. All right, so one graph it. Um, that would be very helpful. Now I'm going to make a little rough graph here. And And you might have to find midpoints. You might have to find perpendicular bisectors. And you're going to have to find perpendicular lines for sure where it matches up with the, um, the this finding the ortho center, center will definitely be easier because you can find the perpendicular bisectors. And they're just the perpendicular lines. You can see where it, um, and you can plug in a point for which is the vertex because the altitude is what goes through the vertex and the where it is perpendicular to the opposite side and you can find where two of them intersect and the medians you find the midpoints and you just make take the two midpoints and you'll find that line and then you can find where two of those mid medians intersect I'm going to skip that right now, one right now I'm going to go to number 40 find the equation for the perpendicular bisector of xy so this kind of goes into um, similar things with the last problem this one I'll actually do. So for x, y, we need x and y. All right. So x and y, we can find the slope. And we'll take y2 minus y1, which would be 3, or sorry, 7 minus a negative 2 over negative 4 minus 6. So we have 9 over negative 10. So then we know that the slope of the perpendicular slope is going to have to be positive 10 over 9. And the um, perpendicular slope will also have to include, so we'll say perpendicular slope. Ten over nine. So opposite reciprocal. Then we'll find the midpoint. And that would be 6 plus negative 4 over 2 for the x's. And negative 2 plus 7 over 2, which would be 1. We will have 2 over 2. And 2 and a half. So that's our midpoint. You can plug that into point slope form where you have y minus the point. We have the point where 2.5 equals the slope 10 over 9 times x minus the x, which is 1. There we got the slope of the perpendicular bisector because it goes through the midpoint. So we have that point that goes through the midpoint and it has the perpendicular slope. All right, 41. Triangle ABC. BC is greater than A or BA. Draw triangle ABC and the median BD. Use the converse of the hinge theorem to explain why angle BDC is obtuse. So if you draw triangle ABC, we have triangle ABC, and we'll say that AB. Where A B or B C is greater than A B or B A, and um, the me median B D median goes from the vertex to the midpoint of here. So this is our midpoint. We'll go like that. That's congruent to that. Then use the converse of the hinge theorem to explain why angle B D C is obtuse. So we know that this angle is greater than this angle. And we also know that um, this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to itself. Um, so we have two sides. All right, the converse is we have two sides that are congruent for both triangles. 
this side and this side. If we're going to do this side and this side. So that means if we have the third side, or sorry, if we have the third side um, where we know that ABA is greater than BC, then the angle BDC has to be greater than angle BDA. And if it's a linear pair, so then that would, then that angle BDC would have to be greater than 90 degrees. And that makes it obtuse. Nice mini proof there. And we've got two left. And these, um, you kind of have to prove number 42. And I'm going to let you work through that one. And number 43 in the figure, WK equals KR. What can you conclude about point A? Well, point A, we know that's on the, uh, it's on the, perp or the angle bisector. It is part of the angle bisector. It's going to be on this line because any point on the angle bisector is congruent away from the side of that angle. That was a that was a theorem from back. All right, so it's on the angle or the angle bisector. All right, so I did put this one on there. I talked to you about it in class um, number sixteen, especially because that one is the very tough one and you can't picture it, but you have the points. So one, I'm going to give you the steps again. Graph it. You don't have to, but it'll help to visualize it. That is optional. Two, in order to find the circumcenter, circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect. So you're going to have to find the midpoints. of all three sides, unless you just want to pick two because we know that they're all going to intersect at the same point, so you, two of them would be fine. Find the perp the slopes, I guess, of the sides, because then you can find the perpendicular slopes. And once you have the perpendicular slopes and you have the midpoints, which would be points that go through um, the um, perpendicular bisectors, find two medi uh, perpendicular bisector equations. And point slope might might be helpful. Might be helpful, and uh, then you can get it into y-intercept form. And the last thing you have to do is solve the system. use at least two. You have to use at least two of those perpendicular bisector equations. All right, so those steps should get you there. I know it's a long process, but I want you to know how to do that. So that's a video on uh, about, I know it's a long video, and so I'm going to cut it off now. This is the video about the Unit 5 review. I hope this helps, and good luck studying.